So I got this old Wilton vise, and uh, I think it's finally time to uh, start taking her apart and everything, getting her cleaned up. She's got character, but it's too nice of a vise to leave in this condition. Plus, it's getting colder outside, and she's starting to freeze up instead of just be smooth with anything. So it's time to go ahead and give her a bath. Get her all lubed up, put a new skirt on her, and uh, get her all freshened up, ready for some more action. But hopefully, uh, she's a little bit looser, because uh, right now she's, oh god, she's tight. I'm going to set her up at an angle on the base. It is a swivel base, so that doesn't matter. Right here, where I've got the holes marked, she'll be able to swivel out this way, 45 degrees. I can lock her in position and she's in line this way with the table. Um, from here I can also turn it this way and you know the bench isn't in the way of the handle. Uh, you can stick parts straight down the side of it. It's going to be perfectly fine. If I were to mount it like this, which would be a regular position, I can't fasten anything in the corner of this on the bottom because this is a leg. and there's no way to get to it without drilling and mucking up a big old hole here so I don't want to do that doing it this way there's a lip over here I can catch and get a fastener on the bottom side of the bolt I'm gonna to try to use these fasteners right here instead of regular nuts I'm probably gonna grind these off to make it flush more of a flush mount on there uh, we'll see how these work but I gonna have to cut these bolts down to the right size too. On this side over here there's a shelf that comes out and there is not enough room in between the top of the shelf lid and the bolt to have a nut on it. So I had to do something like this anyway where the threads are gonna be up inside the workbench and they're gonna be hidden and they're gonna be super low profile. I think I'm gonna try some evapo rust for some stuff uh, we may dip into some electrolysis and uh, believe it or not, we're going to spread some ketchup on this bitch. Look out. As I held held the sides of those and then uh, impacted it so that it would suck that up into the bottom of this shelf. So now this nut thingy is permanently jammed in the bottom side of this tabletop. I get the other three in there. This will be to the point where I can start ripping this thing apart. Stripping her down and redoing her.
this right here is my electrolysis setup. If you want me to go further in depth, uh, leave a comment in the video and I'll show you exactly how I do this kind of stuff. have to remember is red is going to turn to rust We're gonna set it right there. and black is going to end up beautiful. Actually just so you can see the bubbles going I'm going to flip her up to 40. You see that? See all those bubbles going crazy? So that's what 40 amps will do. Now you can run it on 40 amps, but I highly suggest that you watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. See all that cruddy crap and rusty residue on the top there? That means it's probably pretty close to done, but we won't know until we pull it out. It has only been 10 hours. It does a lot of work, even on the two amps. If you have everything hooked up right and got your mixture good, we'll go ahead and pull it out of there and uh, see what she looks like after quick brushing with just a soft bristled plastic brush. Not just any regular ketchup. It's shop ketchup. Round one. Okay, so this is what it looks like after preliminary de-rusting. And uh, there is some surface rust popping up on it now. This was in the electrolysis. And uh, you dry it off real good. And it will flash rust, which, you know, is going to lead us to our next step. We're going to wire brush all these. Um, but yeah, that electrolysis cleaned off all the gunk and grime and grease. I mean, all that shit's gone too. A lot of the paint, not all of it. So yeah, that did great. The ketchup, it didn't do very good at all. There's still a lot of rust left on here. Matter of fact, if I had a bigger tank, I would either electrolysis this, or I would throw it in the evapor rust. This guy, you can tell it was in the evapor rust. This is the side that was down the whole time. I did come over and shake it every now and again. But that's what it looked like before. You can see the line there. So this is what the evaporus did when it looked like that. That's pretty damn good. You can also see it on the handle there. That evaporus works great. The electrolysis works great too. So either one of those. Electrolysis is cheaper than evaporus, but I like the evaporus. We'll start wire wheeling all this stuff after that. Get ready for paint.
All right, fellas. Here she is in all our glory. Uh, the old four-inch Wilton bullet vise. Uh, nothing super fancy, but uh, she's gonna be a worker. And when I got this thing, it was nothing but rust or patina, and uh, I thought really about just spraying it with a clear coat, leaving it, and just using it how she was. But she got real hard to turn. That grease that was in there just froze up, turned to glue. I mean, you couldn't open her or nothing. Now, uh, she swings freely. She opens and closes freely. Everything works like she's supposed to. I did have to put new screws in. Quarter 20 thread, and you can get them anywhere. I red lubed and loved it because... I like the red lube of love. Use it in my ratchets. Use it on this here vise. Like I said, she swings just fine. And right now, it's like 40 degrees out here in this shop. My hands are gonna turn red here before too long if I don't get back inside. Yeah, the ketchup didn't work. Uh, electrolysis and evaporust did. Some of this got a few coats of paint, and then some of the other stuff. Like this right here, I polished it up. Not super fine polish, but you know, just hit it with that Milwaukee die grinder. She's got a nice smooth finish on her. There's no more crap in there. No more gouges and nothing. I radius the edges on it. I left a lot of this stuff just metal. I coated this with Johnson's Pace Wax, that right there, so it won't rust. Uh, the jaws I didn't coat, I did coat the sides here, and I coated this here lever. So yeah, she'll, uh, you know, plenty of plenty of service left in this old vise. Now depending on who you talk to, this was either a vise that was made in 1941 and the warranty ended in September of 45 or this vice was made in 1945 when the war ended World War II it's definitely World War II era did this vice actually serve a tour of duty I don't have any idea I mean I found it in a barn here in Kansas so I'm guessing probably not, but at the same time, we've had real Lugers pop up in estate sales and everything like that taken off of German officers during the war. They were allowed to carry back prizes and whatnot, so, um, you know, who knows? This could have been over in Europe for all I know, and then brought back. Hell, it could have stayed here the whole time. You just never know. As always, like. Comment, share, subscribe, love, hate, hardknocksforge at gmail.com. Don't send me any panties. They never fit.